Uh, greetings, everyone. Um, my name is Assemblywoman Mikhail Salaz. I represent the 22nd Assembly District. Um, where I am here today with uh, esteemed leaders in the Valley Stream community to bring attention to a topic of concern for our community. Uh, with, no, with Mental Health Awareness Day on the horizon, it's important for folks to know that here in the 22nd Assembly District, that you are not alone throughout New York State, that you are not alone, that we are here to help, and there are professionals here to help. Um, there was a, a CDC statistic that said after two years of, of consecutive decline in 2019, 2020, both the number and rate of suicides in the U.S. has increased 4% from uh, 2020 and 2021. And this should make us sound the alarm. The mental health of, of this community and the state at large is something that we should take very seriously. The past few days we are encountering um, and we've seen people who are encountering high levels of stress um, in one way or another. And it's important that all communities, especially communities of color, know that there are resources available and that you know there is um, you know help you don't have to suffer through this alone. You know, communities of color are often the last to seek treatment and tend to stop treatment early. And likewise, likewise we, are tend, we tend to overlook the signs and symptoms, or we simply are unaware of them, or they are taboo. And even more, we see that um, treatment is a sign of weakness or more a failure, which it's not. Uh, while the reality is, by not seeking help, we are stronger, we are actually failing ourselves, our families, and our community. So I will continue to advocate for mental health support that is needed, whether pushing depression screens for pregnant and nursing individuals, or by endorsing and pushing uh, phone numbers like 988, crisis lines that are here that could provide immediate help. It's important to know that mental health is manageable and that you can seek treatment and that in, there is racial disparities in treatment, but we have resources like New Hope in our community that is culturally competent and available and accessible to all. So uh, with that, I'd like to thank uh, New Hope for providing this space for us to have this conversation. And I want to um, thank professionals like um, David Sills, Don Sinkfield, Lisa uh, Foray Atkin, right? <laughs> Um, and New Hope for providing this service right here in the Valley Stream community. Uh, so you don't have to travel to New York City to get um, great care. It's right in your backyard. So with that, um, uh, I want to uh, now give the mic to Nami um, and David Sills, who is going to talk more about this topic. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I'm David Sills. I'm the uh, president of NAMI Queens Nassau. NAMI is a national alliance on mental illness. We're an advocacy, support, and educational uh, group. I'll talk to that in a minute. I'd like to thank uh, Assemblywoman Rogers and her colleagues. Last year, uh, in the Senate and Assembly, we had a successful year for support for people with mental health issues. Not enough, but much more than it ever has been in, in the past. I've been involved with NAMI for 14 years, and this was the most successful funding year for people with mental health uh, issues, so thank you for that. Uh, there are 500 million, uh, 500 million people in the United States who have mental health issues, and only uh, 250 million of them are getting support. Why? Because there's, there's uh, the bias against people uh, with mental health issues, the stigma related to it, uh, lack of funds to get services, and uh, just not even realizing I have a mental health issue. It's a phase I'm going through. So, and, and that's something that has to be uh, considered a great deal. Uh, NAMI itself pro provides a lot of support for any person having mental health issues. Uh, we have support groups, myriad support groups. One of them, which would be uh, very interesting to the black and brown community, is we have a black, uh, black and brown um, wellness support group. It meets twice a month and it's run by uh, people who are black and brown, and uh, something that I cannot relate to. I cannot relate to a lot of the issues that you face. You cannot relate to a lot of the issues we face, but uh, uh, our members who's, who are trained to be support group leaders uh, have, what's the problem in, in getting support? Well, private counseling and 
therapy in uh, psychiatric care is reaching $300 an hour. And that's incredibly high, especially in New York State, where we don't have a mental health parity. The amount of money paid back by insurance plans is not the same as it is for physical health. For example, a family member of mine who has mental health issues can go to his uh, gastroenterologist, pay $250, and um, get back 80% of it. He can go to his private psychiatrist or his therapist, pay $250 an hour, and gets back $70, $80. New York State has a law for mental health parity, but it's not followed through. Uh, so that's one of the problems. You can go to a clinic, which is much less expensive. However, uh, the things we've been hearing at NAMI is that you go to a clinic and um, calling today, uh, we have a spot for you on February 15th. If I'm in crisis, that spot on February 15th is not going to do any good. The assembly woman mentioned the 988 law. Uh, which hopefully, you know, it's, it's too new for us to know what kind of success it is, but it's similar to 911, but only focus on people with mental health issues. Hopefully, if they do call that, if people do call that number, if there's a crisis, they will get the right support. Uh, another problem that's going through is for all communities. Uh, for example, this community, Valley Stream Hospital, closed their mental health, uh, behavioral health uh, ward. Uh, it's now a uh, orthopedic ward. Why? Because they get more money back from physical health than they do for mental health. So money is the root of all evils in getting support for for uh, mental health issues. Um, hopefully the 988 rule will help. Uh, one of the problems that we are facing at NAMI is that we, we have a hotline, we have a warm line, uh, to, to provide support for people, but most people don't even know we exist. The Northwell Hospital System does give out our brochures and our information with a discharge. So any person who's discharged gets the information, but that's just the Northwell uh, System. Psychiatrists tend to not want, want to receive our brochures. Therapists tend to not want to receive our brochures. So people don't know we exist. We've tried to have advertisements in local newspapers and in Newsday, but um, to be honest, the cost is prohibitive. Uh, even for a quarter page, it's $300, $400 just, just for advertising. We're having a lot of trouble financially this year because our greatest uh, financial support was for, for, for our annual walk we, at Jones Beach, which we didn't have three years, for, for three years. We, start, we, we will have one on October 30th at Jones Beach, but so over the past three years, we've lost a great deal of our financial support. Um, so, like any other agency, we're in trouble, financial trouble. Um, quite honestly, um, our membership does not consist of a lot of black, black and brown members. We do have black and brown members. We have some very active black and brown members. But we're not reaching the communities we, we want to reach. And that's, we're NAMI Queens, Nassau. Um, we basically have people from North Shore and Central Nassau, some on the South Shore, very few from Queens. And we'd like to get the word out that we're available. Everything we provide is free. No, no, no uh, we don't do counseling, but we can refer people. Uh, we have Classes for family members of uh, family members of people with mental health issues uh, at different age levels. We have one group called Basics, which is uh, dealing with your child's problem from uh, kindergarten through high school. Then we have a class called Family to Family, which is the same thing, but for older people. The, the issues are different, especially for the younger people, uh, school issues. What do I tell the school? Do I tell the truth? Do I give them all the information? Do I tell the school that my, my son's on psychotropic drugs? You know, that kind of thing. When I go for an IEP meeting, so the person's classified, how far do I go? Do I tell them everything? That kind of thing. Um, one of the problems we're having in the schools is that um, parents are not telling the school nurse that um, the child's on psychotropic drugs. And so if the child acts out in school, what do I do? You know, that kind of thing. So we're here, NAMI's here, we're here to work 
with all communities. We would love to get a foot in the black and brown community because it's a very underserved community. Thank you for your time. Um, so you heard that, you know, even people who are not particularly going through a mental health crisis can have the opportunity to help by supporting an organization in their walk. And so you said October 30th is a, a walk in which people can come and contribute, almost like the breast cancer walk, where you can go and walk and raise money for a cause. And so let's raise money for mental health awareness so that no one who's going through a particular situation or crisis is left in the dark. Um, so with that, I want to um, uh, give the mic to Don Stinkfeld, who, Stinkfeld, who is um, our host today at New Hope. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to say that we really appreciate um, people like Assemblywoman Salaja, other thoughtful um, lawmakers, um, politicians who help us to get this important cause um, out front uh, so it can be spoken of, so that people realize it, that it's important to have access to mental health care. Uh, when we started this mission in 2010, it was just me and a few counselors that uh, got together and were doing treatment in the community. We got on a, a few health insurance panels and we started Help to Adjust the Help to Adjust Clinic, which still exists, started in 2014. And we transferred our entire customer base over to the New Hope and grew the organization to the point where we now offer um, health insurance and other things for our, uh, for our employees. And what we really want to do is make it so that um, mental health is not a career that is um, severely underpaid um, so that people um, can do this work for the community and make a living in a, in a dignified way. It is, it is truly some of the most important uh, work that, that exists. We, we actually have seen a lot of growth in terms of the way people are able to access mental health and um, mental health care, and we've seen a lot of growth in people's perception of um, the idea of accessing mental health care. For instance, I think um, if you went back to about 1990, um, on a state level, you might have had some uh, you had you might have had some more inpatient care than we have now, but um, in terms of people having adjustment issues, in terms of people dealing with uh, maybe not a major depressive disorder, but a, uh, you know, a, a cycle of depression that is dealing with uh, something that has happened in their life, people really didn't seek the treatment. And um, I think now, I think we really have more people who are saying I'm feeling a little bit down because of something that's happening in my life, et cetera, and they know that they can call. So, uh, the New Hope Mental Health Counseling treats over 700 people um, weekly, that is um, uh, families, couples, individuals. We work closely with a psych nurse practitioner who helps us in case someone really does need that next level of care in terms of medication management. We also uh, work with um, other organizations. Um, NAMI has been phenomenal in terms of getting the word out. Um, Hakeem Rahim, who's, who's somebody I've worked closely with, has been a colleague over at NAMI that's been doing great work. So, um, you know, the, the care is here. Um, right on this very block, we have the New Hope Mental Health Counseling and we have the Help to Adjust Clinic. Um, and we started the New Hope Mental Health Counseling in Rockville Center where we're doing walk-in sessions. So, you know, we want you to know that the, uh, the care is here and we are here as, as an organization and as a community. The last thing I'll say is that um, I think that there's a movement um, in 
the Valley Stream area that expands to South Queens where um, uh, there's a lot of clinicians who are providing these services. I mean, you can go on psychologytoday.com. Um, you can find a variety of clinicians. It's, it's not limited to just uh, one or two um, choices. And the um, 988 um, service is a very important thing. Um, thank you, um, Assembly Women Psychologists, for, um, for promoting and, um, and uh, signing onto that uh, bill, which has now become law. It's, it's necessary and it's important. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I also like to allow Lisa Foray Ackman to come. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And I just want to echo um, Mr. John Singfield. Thank you, Assemblyman uh, Salaj, for creating. Okay, I'm in my therapeutic voice. <laughs> <laughs> creating an opportunity for us to have an open, authentic conversation about mental health. Um, I just want to say a few words on it. To prepare for this discussion today, I started um, doing some research and just looking at what's called the code tabulation, uh, zip code tabulation access. And it was interesting because it was a study that was done between 2014 and 2019 with regards to um, by American community and showing that there is a clear uh, distinction disparity in terms of access to mental health services based on your zip code and which expands from a political perspective, expands from um, access to hospitals, expands um, to getting the best quality of services, your schools, your, your supermarkets, your uh, education. If you can't afford to be able to get a high level of education, therefore that affects the type of job you're able to get, which then affects your ability to get a car, uh, affects your ability to travel and, and take full advantage of services that should be a given right. Mental health should be treated like anything else. We go to the dentist, we go to like yearly physicals. Why is mental health put in the position of a specialized service where if you don't have the money, if you're not in the right neighborhood, if you don't have the socioeconomic advantages, therefore your mental state is put at risk. So my journey in terms of being part of New Hope Mental Health Counseling Services is, um, has been a great privilege. I started out with Mr. Don Singfield with Help to Adjust and then transitioned to Help to Adjust. Um, it's important that we continue to have these open, honest, authentic conversation that we're going to continue to make an impact. Um, we work with children from five years old to Golden State. And we're getting into the community, we're getting into the schools, we're opening up a not-for-profit for those who don't have access because of socioeconomic disadvantages. Um, that ability to provide them with top quality clinicians. We're here. We care. It's not just an image here. We want to be able to service our community uh, to leave a legacy behind that we have a generation that is healthy, that's grounded, that's balanced. Um, they're the next future, and we get to be a part of that. So on that note, I want to say thank you. Thank you. So I, I thank all the speakers today. Would you like to speak? Yes, I heard them. I think they said it all. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> Um, so with that, I, I thank uh, all the speakers, New Hope, NAMI, uh, for standing with us and, and making sure that people have access to mental health and talking about the journey before us to ensure that access is free, clear, and available to all. Um, but the point of the press conference is that on Monday, um, October 10th, is a Mental Health Awareness Day. So that is a prime opportunity for you to just seek the help that's needed. It's just one phone call away, um, it's one text message away, it's one email away. I take that chance, take that opportunity. I guarantee you, your life will change. We're here to help and you're not alone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.